Eugene Cernan, Wikipedia Audio Eugene Andrew Cernan was an American astronaut, naval aviator, electrical engineer, aeronautical engineer, and fighter pilot. On Apollo 17, Cernan became the 11th person to walk on the moon and, as the last man to re-enter the lunar module, the last person as of 2018 to have walked on the moon. He traveled into space three times, as pilot of Gemini 9A in June 1966, as lunar module pilot of Apollo 10 in May 1969, and as commander of Apollo 17 in December 1972, the final Apollo lunar landing. Cernan was also a backup crew member for the Gemini 12, Apollo 7, and Apollo 14 space missions. Cernan was born on March 14, 1934, in Chicago, Illinois, the son of Rose and Andrew Cernan. His father was of Slovak descent and his mother was of Czech ancestry. Cernan grew up in the suburban towns of Bellwood and Maywood. Cernan was a Boy Scout and earned the rank of second class. After attending McKinley Elementary School in Bellwood and graduating from Proviso East High School in Maywood, class of 1952, he went on to study at Purdue University, where he became a member of Phi Gamma Delta fraternity. After his sophomore year, he accepted a partial Navy ROTC scholarship which also required him to serve aboard USS Roanoke between his junior and senior years. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering in 1956, where his final GPA was 5.1 out of 6.0. Biography His hobbies included love for horses, sports, hunting, fishing, and flying. Cernan was commissioned a U.S. Navy ensign through the Naval Reserve Officers Training Corps at Purdue, and was initially stationed on the USS Saipan. Cernan transitioned to active duty, and attended flying training at Whiting Field, Barron Field, Naval Air Station Corpus Christi, and Naval Air Station Memphis. 2931 following flight training on the T-28 Trojan, T-33 Shooting Star, and F-9F Panther, Cernan became a naval aviator, flying FJ-4 Fury and A-4 Skyhawk jets in attack squadrons 126 and 113, 31 33 38 39 Upon completion of his assignment in Miramar, California, he finished his education in 1963 at the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School with a Master of Science degree in Aeronautical Engineering. Throughout his career, Cernan logged more than 5,000 hours of flying time, with 4,800 hours in jet aircraft. In addition to his flight hours, Cernan also landed on aircraft carriers 200 times. Cernan was selected among the third group of NASA astronauts in October 1963 by NASA to participate in the Gemini and Apollo programs. Cernan was originally selected as backup pilot for Gemini 9 with Thomas Stafford. When the prime crew was killed in the crash of NASA T-38A 901 at Lambert Field on February 28, 1966, the backup crew became the prime crew. This was the first time the backup crew had become the flight crew. Gemini 9A encountered a number of problems, the original target vehicle exploded during launch, and the planned docking with a substitute target vehicle was made impossible by a protective shroud failing to separate after launch. However, the crew performed a rendezvous that simulated procedures that would be used in Apollo 10, the first optical rendezvous, and a lunar orbit abort rendezvous. Cernan performed the second American EVA, but overexertion due to lack of limb restraints prevented testing of the AMU and forced the early termination of the spacewalk. 
Cernan was also a backup pilot for the Gemini 12 mission. Cernan was selected for the Lunar Module pilot position on the backup crew for Apollo 7, and standard crew rotation put him in place as the Lunar Module pilot on Apollo 10, the final dress rehearsal mission for the first Apollo lunar landing, on May 18, 26, 1969. During the mission, Cernan and Apollo 10 Commander Tom Stafford piloted the lunar module Snoopy in lunar orbit to within just 8.5 nautical miles of the lunar surface, successfully executing every phase of a lunar landing up until final powered descent, providing NASA planners with critical knowledge of technical systems and lunar gravitational conditions to enable Apollo 11 to successfully land on the moon just two months later. Cernan turned down the opportunity to walk on the moon as lunar module pilot of Apollo 16, preferring to risk missing a flight altogether for the opportunity to command his own mission. Cernan therefore moved back into the Apollo rotation as commander of the backup crew for Apollo 14, putting him in position through normal crew rotation to command his own crew on Apollo 17. Escalating budget cutbacks for NASA, however, raised the question of how many more lunar missions the agency might be able to fly. After the cancellation of Apollo 15 and Apollo 19 in September, 1970, pressure mounted from the scientific community to shift the sole professional geologist in the active Apollo roster of astronauts, Harrison Schmidt, to the crew of the final surviving Apollo mission, Apollo 17. In August 1971, NASA named Schmidt as the lunar module pilot for Apollo 17. This decision meant the original LM pilot, Joe Engel, never had the opportunity to walk on the moon. Cernan fought to keep his crew together, given the choice of flying with Schmidt as LMP or seeing his entire crew removed from Apollo 17, however, Cernan chose to fly with Schmidt. Cernan eventually came to have a positive evaluation of Schmidt's abilities. For example, he concluded that Schmidt was an outstanding LM pilot, while Engel was merely an adequate one. Cernan's role as commander of Apollo 17 closed out the Apollo program's lunar exploration mission with a number of record-setting achievements. During the three days of Apollo 17's surface activity, Cernan and Schmidt performed three EVAs for a total of about 22 hours of exploration of the Taurus Litro Valley. Their first EVA alone was more than three times the length astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spent outside the LM on Apollo 11. During this time Cernan and Schmidt covered more than 35 kilometers using the lunar rover and spent a great deal of time collecting geologic samples of samples, the most of any Apollo mission that would shed light on the moon's early history. Cernan piloted the rover on its final sortie, recording a maximum speed of 11.2 miles per hour, giving him the unofficial lunar land speed record. Early Years As Cernan prepared to climb the ladder for the final time, he spoke these words, currently the last spoken by a human standing on the moon's surface. Bob, this is Jean, and I'm on the surface, and, as I take man's last step from the surface, back home for some time to come but we believe not too long into the future I'd like to just what I believe history will record, that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. And, as we leave the moon at Taurus Litro, we leave as we came and, God willing, as we shall return, with peace and hope for all mankind. Godspeed the crew of Apollo 17. Cernan's being the last person to walk on the moon means that Purdue University holds the distinction of being the alma mater of both the first person to walk on the moon, and the most recent. 
Cernan was one of only three humans to travel to the moon on two different occasions and one of only 12 people to walk on the moon. Apollo 10 holds the world-slash-moon record for the highest speed attained by any manned vehicle at 39,897 km per hour during its return from the moon on May 26, 1969. In 1976, Cernan retired from the Navy with the rank of Captain, and from NASA, and went into private business. He became Executive Vice President of Coral Petroleum Inc. before starting his own company, the Cernan Corporation, in 1981. From 1987 he was a contributor to ABC News and the weekly breakthrough segment of its Good Morning America morning show for a segment on health, science, and medicine. In 1999 he published his memoir The Last Man on the Moon with co-author Donald A. Davis, covering his naval and NASA career. He is featured in the space exploration documentary In the Shadow of the Moon, in which he stated, Truth needs no defense and nobody can take those footsteps I made on the surface of the moon away from me. Cernan also contributed to the book of the same name. Cernan and Neil Armstrong testified before U.S. Congress in 2010 in opposition to the cancellation of the Constellation program. It had been initiated during the Bush administration as part of the vision for space exploration with the aim of returning humans to the Moon and eventually Mars, but was deemed underfunded and unsustainable by the Augustine Commission in 2009. Cernan also paired his criticism of the cancellation of Constellation with expressions of skepticism about NASA's planned replacements for that program's role in supplying cargo and crew to the International Space Station, commercial resupply services and commercial crew development. Such companies, Cernan warned, do not yet know what they don't know. Cernan's view of CRS and CCDEV commercial space companies, and SpaceX in particular, underwent a positive shift, however, after being debriefed at length by SpaceX venture capitalist Steve Jurvetson, who reached out to Cernan as part of his effort to obtain the signatures of nine Apollo astronauts on a photo meant as a gift to SpaceX founder Elon Musk to mark the occasion of the first successful SpaceX cargo mission to the ISS in 2012. Eventually, Cernan was won over, and added his signature to the photo. As I told him these stories of heroic entrepreneurship, I could see his mind turning, Jurvetson wrote. He found a reconciliation, I never read any of this in the news. Why doesn't the press report on this? In 2016, Cernan appeared in the documentary The Last Man on the Moon, made by British filmmaker Mark Craig. The film, Nine Years in the Making, is based on Cernan's 1999 memoir of the same title. The film received the Texas Independent Film Award from Houston Film Critics Society and the Movies for Grown Ups Award from AARP The Magazine. Navy Service NASA Career Cernan was married twice and had one daughter. His first wife was Barbara Jean Ashley a flight attendant for Continental Airlines, who he married in 1961. They had one daughter, Tracy. In 1980 they separated, divorcing in 1981. They remained friends. His second marriage was to Jan Nana Cernan, which lasted for nearly 30 years from 1987 until his death. Cernan gained two stepdaughters, Kelly and Danielle. Gemini Program Apollo Program Apollo 10 Apollo 17 Post-NASA Career Cernan died in a hospital in Houston on January 16, 2017, 
at the age of 82. He was buried with full military honors at Texas State Cemetery, the first astronaut to be buried there, during a private service on January 25, 2017. Cernan was a member of several organizations, Fellow, American Astronautical Society, Member, Society of Experimental Test Pilots, Member, Tau Beta Pi, Sigma Xi, Phi Gamma Delta, and the Explorers Club. On July 2, 1974, Cernan was a roaster of Don Rickles on the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast. At the end of the roast, Rickles paid tribute to Cernan as a delightful, wonderful, great hero. Cernan was featured in the Discovery Channel's documentary miniseries When We Left Earth, the NASA missions, providing narrative on his involvement and missions as an astronaut. In the 1998 Primetime Emmy Award-winning HBO miniseries From the Earth to the Moon, he was portrayed by Daniel Hugh Kelly. Personal Life Cernan's story of leaving the initials of his daughter, Tracy, written on a rock on the moon, was prominently mentioned in the 20th episode of the third season of Modern Family. The story, and Cernan's relationship with his daughter in general, was later adapted into Tracy's song by pop rock band No More Kings. Although he didn't write his daughter's initials on a rock, Cernan himself states in the 2014 documentary The Last Man on the Moon that he wrote them in the lunar dust as he left the rover to return to the Lem and Earth. Cernan's voice from the Apollo 17 mission was sampled by Daft Punk for the duo's 2013 album Random Access Memories, in the last track named Contact. Cernan's last words on the lunar surface, along with Lunar Module pilot Harrison Schmidt's recollections, were used by the band Public Service Broadcasting for the song Tomorrow, the final track of their 2015 album The Race for Space. Death Organizations Awards and Honors In Popular Culture <laughs>